this year. First of all, how do you analyse that one? Oh, look, obviously very disappointing. Um, it's a hard one to assess, though. Uh, you know, we, um, we're, we're pretty disjointed at the moment, but we don't want anyone feeling sorry for us or make any excuses, but we, we, are, we are battling to get that synergy, uh, as I su suspected today. There was moments where we looked, you know, um, pretty connected, but there was a lot of moments where um, Fremantle outworked us and uh, beat us with fundamentals, and um, yeah, we looked uh, we looked pretty poor at stages there. So yeah, it's, it's a, it is a tough one to assess, but um, we need to get on with it and move on to the next week after a review process tomorrow, and hopefully get a bit more uh, synergy within the club. Yeah, you had about nine or so of your best 22 out, and a lot of those players are probably in your best 10. So how hard was it for you as a coach just to get some sort of synergy and connection there? Uh, yeah, that's a challenge, one that we're up for. So, yeah, we don't... Yeah, I've said this a couple of times. Um, they're not excuses, they're reasons. But I, I think we could have played better. So, you know, you don't have to win every week, but um, our effort and intensity probably was a little bit inconsistent, or it was. And I, I don't want to just put it down to the fact we had 10 guys coming back from COVID. I think, I think Fremantle were a bit tougher and harder at stages. We went to ground too much and we didn't work hard enough um, in and around the contest as well. So there's those things that definitely we need to get better at regardless of what's happening. And then there's the fact that we had you know, a lot of guys who may have been blowing at stages and um, struggled to keep up with the game. And Jermaine Jones would have saw him get subbed out, what was his issue? His hammy's got quite tight, um, one of them in particular, so I'm not quite sure what that's going to end up with, but um, yeah, we'll see where we go on, on tomorrow. Yeah. And what was your opinion on the two deliberate rush behind rule um, <laughs> judgments there? It evened itself up quite nicely, I thought. <laughs> so suffice to say that both should have just been uh, in your opinion, yeah. It's the last thing I'm worrying about, to be honest. We've got um, a lot of other things we want to concentrate on rather than umpiring. So umpiring had no effect on tonight's result. McGovern's performance in defence, how pleased were you? Well, he's one guy, on? yeah, he's one guy who has had a consistent look and him and Shannon Hearn tonight, you know, great leaders, um, you know, stood up really well under adversity. So we're really proud of them. You know, Gov was our captain tonight. And he's uh, he's been carrying the load a fair bit for you know for three weeks so or not just three weeks probably for the last five weeks with our injury concerns as well so yeah proud of him. And Tim Kelly, how bad was his hamstring injury? Well, we didn't think anything of it until Thursday, so he, he's probably um, a week or two away. Um, might have been a tiny niggle on uh, on game day last week that he thought was cramp and. Um, because we didn't train all week, uh, we opened up on Thursday a little bit, um, and that's when he noticed that it was a bit tight. So uh, he, he'll, he'll be unavailable next week, definitely. No, right. Thanks for that. I'll pass the cost to the other guys. Thanks, Chatters. Now, you mentioned the blokes are blowing. One of the questions that everyone had going into the game was how would COVID and the lungs impact people on the field? And it was negative 58 disposals in the second half, and it was really close at, at half time. Did you notice blokes weren't able to go? I'd like to say that, that that's not the COVID situation. We just don't know. Like, no, I don't think any club's gone through what we have with 10 guys coming in. So maybe we could have managed that better. I don't know how we could have because there's no one else available. So, um, no, nah, look, I thought at stages we were quite connected and worked our backsides off. And then there were stages where we, we weren't and Fremantle were just too good. So we've got to give credit to them. They, they were missing players as well, facing adversity themselves. So, I, yeah, look, we can look at it. I, I think there was some of our players who normally are high-end work rate players that were a little bit off, but um, I'm sure there's some connection there. To, you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty obvious, but I, I don't want that to be the, the story behind tonight's game. I think. We weren't good enough tonight. We need to get on with next week. We've got pies going really well. And we'll get some players back and hopefully some synergy will be at a six day break. So how do you handle the morale side of things when you've been smashed physically and health wise and the 0-3 part of it makes the season really hard from here. 
how do you get them up to go it's you still can perform you still can compete and everyone's and the world isn't against you i suppose oh that's that's up to you know all of us at the club you know we and have been pushing really hard the, the spirit and belonging of the club because we we need to rely on that so they're they're the intangibles that make it special to be at a football club so dealing with resilience our club's been done it well over the last 35 years and this is a moment in time so we keep learning we get opportunity to see some players play um, make some really good decisions on that on them going forward some of the younger players you know are probably playing when they you know perhaps not quite ready which is which is fine we get to um, give them some exposure so we'll get some positives out of the next few weeks um, but it would be nice to have some of the players we're missing back and fit and healthy. Just on the getting those players back, um, that's the first part is getting back to 19, 20, 21, 22 players. I'm sure that's the first part. Have you done any modelling about how long it would take and to reduce the impacts of what you've lost over pre-season once you are back to that full level? Well, that, that, that's a really good question. That's something that we're aware of. Um, just because you're back doesn't mean um, and we went through this last year. We, we had some significant injuries that, that were long term. They came back. I, th I think it was the Bulldogs game, and on paper we looked great. And then there was no no go in them when they come back. So we've got to work really hard to not only get them back and available, but they've got to be fit and match hardened. And that, it's hard to do this time of year. But we've got to find a way. You know, this is the start of the season. Yep, I know there's a lot of stats about you zero and three and you, you whatever percentage you are of not making finals, but you never know. Um, and we're, we're, we're up for the fight and we've got some really good players on our list that will come back and we'll get them fit as we can and we'll have a swing. You talk a little bit about um, Nelson on Brayshaw today. One, how you thought he went in the first half. Um, secondly, if you thought you made the most of, it, of Brayshaw's lack of input, I guess, in the first half and why you decided not to continue that run after half time. Yeah, we're really, really happy with what he did. The scoreboard dictates those things. Um, so, you know, we potentially could have held on. I think we're down by 30 plus points when, when we made the decision to, to drop it. Uh, I don't think Brayshaw's influence in the second half was the difference between what happened. Um, but yeah, he did a tremendous job. Yeah, I think he, he had probably more possessions than, than Brayshaw and, you know, he kicked the goal himself. So I think, I think he was, um, he was doing exactly what we asked him to do. We just had to mix it up a little bit, um, try a few things, a few guys in a few different positions. So Nelson's a halfback flanker. Yeah. And he's been playing wing yeah. and, and tagging on ball. So we, um, we've we seen a bit. We, we, we know we can do the job if we need him. Thanks. G'day, Adam. Ben from AFL.com. Hey, um, you talked about uh, opportunity the situations presented. Your, your second ruck, um, dilemma. What did you think of Hugh Dixon tonight? He's another one who's never second rucked before at AFL level, and even the last five minutes, you know, as much as that game was done, and we, you know, we were managing players on the bench, but Dixon in the ruck, Petrocelli on ball, just a little glimpse of what potentially may be with these guys and having that type of exposure. You just, you just don't know what that does for their confidence down the track and their ability to step up when we need them. Like we're using every player on our list at the moment, plus, you know, um, some top ups when needed. So they, these, this experience, whilst it's painful and we don't like it and we're not used to it, we, we've got to be optimistic as well about what might be in the future. So he's part of that story. Yeah. Um, and you're probably hard to answer this, but do you expect anyone back next week? I mean, Barras is the one who's been in for a while. Yeah. Um, I think Barras, I spoke to him this morning, he's, he hopefully will be right this week. Um, you know, Shuey, Duggan, Rioli, uh, Bailey Williams, you know, then you've got Yo, Cripps, um, who else is there? <laughs> Oscar Allen. Um, yeah, but, but there's a few more. I reckon the next three weeks, touch wood, if we, uh, if we don't get any injuries, We'll look like a side that's what we planned at the start of the year. There'll be three or four, five injuries, but we'll have 18 of our best, you know, potential best 22. So that, that's, that's what we're aiming for. And you've got to get them fit. And then some of the guys that stood up in the last three weeks will, will stay on the side, definitely. You just touched on it, Elliot. Yo, actually, we saw him on the track this week. So can you give us an update? Is he 
a few weeks away or getting close? Maybe a couple of weeks. Yeah, I don't think he'll be available this week. But, um, yeah, I'd say two weeks away, hopefully. Beautiful. Thanks, Adam. Just, just one more for me. Quite seriously, how are you? I know you'll say you're <laughs> fine, you're all good. All good. You're coaching in, in a really difficult environment. How are you going? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Um, I, uh, I'm pragmatic. Uh, you know, we, we, it's just been a bit of a cluster, to be honest. We've, we've, we've embarked on a, a new phase with the way we want to play. We, we haven't been able to execute that very often. But um, I'm still optimistic. I'm still glass half full. I still think the players' sense of spirit and belonging is as strong as I've seen it for a number of years, which I'd be worried if that wasn't there. Now, we might not win, might not look great on field at times, but I think within the four walls, we're connected. And that's, that's my priority at the moment.